In this video, I'll install this Unify industrial switch into that cupboard and show you why I'm choosing this and then install it with a Nano HD access point as well. So come along. All right, so I'm here in front of the cupboard that I'm installing this uh, switch into, but let me just give you some context first. Let me just show you where I am. So this is the, what's gonna be the kids lounge area kind of thing. So if I just move back here, you can see it's just a cupboard in a room. And that down there is the in-wall HD uh, access point that I made in a different video, or you know, I explained in a different video, so check that out. Um, but it's just a, a corner cupboard and uh, I'll just show you what it looks like before we install it. So up here is a switch, you know, PowerPoint, power switch. And I'm gonna install it about here, I think, the switch. But let's just talk a bit more about the switch that I have chosen. So I'll put you back on the tripod here. So the one that I wanna talk about, that we're gonna to install today is this uh, Unified Industrial Switch. It's industrial because this is heavy. It's about 4.3 kilos, which is about 600,000 pounds, I think. Um, and it's fanless, so it makes no noise. And that's why it's heavy. It's got a big heat, big, uh, big heat sink on it. And I'm going to use this because it's plenum rated. So you can use this in plenums, which is sort of like the space under the floor or over the ceiling where you have air conditioning units and stuff like that. So it's not your attic. That's pretty clear, it's not your attic. It's sort of like in the room, but not in the room, meh. But because this cupboard here doesn't have any fan and there's no, it's, in summer it gets hot in here, um, this I thought would be a better choice. Also because where I showed you just before where the in-wall HD is, there's gonna be a TV in front of that and movies and whatever. So you don't want to switch going while you're watching your movies. So that's why I chose this. It can also be installed horizontally or vertically. So I think I'm gonna do it vertically on the wall to get it a bit out of the way. Um, but uh, let's have a look at what this thing looks like and what's, um, what's actually going on. So here's the box. Uh, it's one of these industrial boxes. Uh, I don't like doing unboxing videos, but I do wanna kind of share with you opening these things because I love opening new stuff. Um, it's a nice tab here, we'll pull that off and then we'll have a look inside. So, as I said, it's really heavy. Um, it's, it tends to be when it's more um, professional type equipment or, you know, prosumer, it comes in these gray boxes or you know, gray cardboard colored boxes. Um, but that's all there is in it, just in the box, that's it. So this beauty here, let's just get it out of its home. There you go. So, see, it's pretty much all heat sink. Uh, there's only a power point on the back, that's it but it has these, you can see the screw holes here, so we can mount it vertically, that's pretty cool. Um, or you can mount it horizontally, whatever you prefer, but yeah, it is heavy, it's really heavy. So on the front here, we have just a little bit of a protective cover, and here are all the different ports. So we get eight PoE++ ports. So they support up to 48 wa uh, volts and 60 watts each. So these are pretty powerful um, PoE options for you know cameras, access points, whatever. So we'll install it access point after we install this as well, a Nano HD. So you can see how that all look, links up. And then there's just two uh, non-PoE ports here, which I'll use to connect it to um, my switch that is in my server cabinet on the other side of the house. Uh, but that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it. It's a pretty simple device, which is what it should be. Uh, it's a layer two. Uh, switch, so not layer three, so it runs on MAC address um, switching, which is fine for, for my purposes. And um, yeah, it's, it's a switch. I don't know what else to say, I think. Let's just, um, let's install it, shall we? That'll be quick, yeah.
I'm now in the Unify controller, so let's see how we can adopt this industrial switch. So I've connected it to the network, so just waiting for it to be registered here, that there is a new device. And that just pops up like this, ready to add, and then we can add that new industrial switch. And that's just a standard Unify adoption process. There is nothing different just because it's a different kind of hardware device. So this is now being adopted. You can see there's a blue flashing light there, meaning uh, it's in the process of being adopted. That's now gone to green. It's getting ready to uh, be ready to be used. And there it is. It's now fully adopted. Now the magic of editing did make that go a bit quicker. But you can see there's also an update available. I also have a bunch of other updates available. That must have come recently because I haven't actually noticed that before in this uh, this week. So we're now updating the industrial switch just to get it up to speed with the latest updates from Unify. And now it is ready to be used. So let's have a look at it. So there's eight ports here. Obviously, you can see there's eight uh, squares there, gray squares, because we haven't plugged anything into it yet. There's also a orange square which means that it is actually running at 100 megabit that's a bit weird it should be a gigabit switch i think i have a problem with cabling uh, but i'll sort that out later let's have a look at the device we want to give it a name i always give my devices names as you can see here all the others have names in relation to where they are and what they are so this will be the lounge room switch because it's in the kids lounge room and i'll apply the changes to that and that's pretty much it um, you can see any of the services here. You can change. There's some called jumbo frames and flow control. I don't actually know what that is. I should probably learn that. And here's all the ports. So when we plug something into them, we can uh, see how that works. So there we go. The switch is adopted. It's in there. Now the next step is I want to attach this Nano HD access point with this cable that I've made up over in the attic space into the next room um, so that we can get good Wi-Fi in there as well. But these, these are cool, by the way, the Nano HD, fantastic devices. This is the fifth one I'm setting up, pretty hooked on those. Uh, but um, yeah, let's see how that works with the industrial switch when we actually hook something into it um, because there's a lot of power in that as we saw in the, just before when I set it up, you know, eight ports of 60 watts. So we got a fair bit to, uh, to play with, but um, let's set it up. So we're back in the controller and I want to adopt this new Nano HD that we've uh, just uh, hooked up to it and installed. And it should come, there it is, it comes up just like that. And we don't want to adopt this UAP Nano HD as the official naming of it is, just click adopt. This is exactly like any other adoption process from any other switch on the Unify ecosystem. And that's nice. Uh, so once we've adopted it, you can see it comes up here on the port one shows you the power consumption 4.6 watts and obviously we can run 60 watts off this so this is almost nothing and this is one of the beauties about the nano hd it uses almost no power uh, it's really powerful uh two by two or four by four mimo i can't remember but it's pretty powerful if we then go into the port i like to name my ports so i know what is attached to them so this particular nano hd is going into jordan's room and hence I name it like that. And the same with the actual device. I want to name that uh, Jordan's room as well. So there's nothing special about attaching anything to the Unify uh, industrial switch. Just like any other switch in the Unify system, you just uh, plug things in and they get adopted. That is the beauty of this Unify ecosystem. It just kind of works. That's it. Unify industrial switch is now hooked up uh, to my switch which is on the other side of the house now i'm getting that 100 megabit connection instead of one gigabit and i think it's my cabling or my crimping that's not quite up to scratch but i'll figure that out later uh, this switch does do one gigabit of course uh, which means that the access point will do one gigabit but we'll get there so i hope you like this video 
Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more installation of networking stuff and Lego and cars and whatever else I come up with. Any sort of home automation as well. Um, I enjoy doing it all. And I, uh, yeah, leave a comment if you've got other ways of doing this. If you might know why I'm getting 100 megabit and it's not the cabling, let me know. But other than that, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and uh, see you next time.